Welcome to a new and exciting fireside talk of the Zero Project Conference 2022. It's exciting because we are touching in this session a topic uh, that's quite unique, but actually it's in the heart of accessibility. We are going to talk about Lorman and the Lorman alphabet. And I'm having here with me Juliana, Juliana Batjani, uh, who is a social entrepreneur from Austria, uh, who is doing a great work on promoting uh, Lorman. So welcome, Juliana. Good to have you here with us. Let's start with a brief introduction of yours. Who are you and why is Lorman so important for you? Thank you, Michael. I'm very pleased to be talking to you today at the Fireside Chat about Lorman and the association to promote communication with the hearing impaired. Um, so Lorman is a tactile finger spelling method to communicate and it was, found, it was developed by a deafblind person, um, Hieronymus Lorm. Um, he was an author and deafblind. He developed this to communicate with his family and uh, only once he had died, the family passed it on to other deafblind families or persons. Um, it has since been used in part of the deafblind community in German speaking countries and the Czech Republic and some of the um, northern countries. Anyway, um, I discovered it and used it with my family because I myself, I'm hearing impaired and um, I also ask you for patience if I don't understand your questions and I'll ask again. Um, so I used it and I felt it was a bit frustrating that no one else knew this um, technique which is so convenient because it's so incredibly easy and fast to learn. And, um, and so that's why I decided I would like to uh, promote it and pass it on to others. Um, Could you give us a brief explanation of what Lorman is and how Lorman works so that we have an idea? So um, I got a glove here with all the letters of the alphabet on it. Um, if you can see like that. Um, there are dots and lines and um, the vowels, for example, are on top of each finger, A, E, I, O, U. And um, so these are the dots. And then you have lines like this. This is the consonants, T, B, D, G, H. And um, like this, each letter has a certain position the circle is the S, like the sun. So it's really easy to remember um, drumming like the raindrops. Uh, so you spell letter by letter the words into the hand. The deaf blind obviously spell into the hand of the other person, whereas um, as I can see um, when someone Spell, uses Lorman with me, he can just as well write it into his own hand. Uh, so the deaf blind would take the other person's hand into his own and spell into the hand. And if I spell or someone communicates with me and I can see, he can spell L O R M E N, Lorman, right? Um, so that's easy. And once I have shown you how it works, um, now if I see you, for example, in a few weeks or months time, you probably may have forgotten where the L is and O, but if I wear the glove, you will remember, ah, the lines are the strokes and the vowels are just dots. No? So you can read the single letters while you actually communicate with me. Um, so it really doesn't take much to use it. Uh. So just to give our um, listeners and viewers an example. So if I'm communicating to you and in and not touching you, it's COVID time still, uh, but I would um, use my finger and your hand and would write this on your palm. That's how this communication works. 
if I'm deaf blind, you will write into my hand exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Otherwise, you take your hand up and you spell for me the word into your hand, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting here and I can read what you're writing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, could you give us also an example of how quick you are? I think this is also important that this is really a communication. Uh, right. What would be my name is Juliane mean in, in, in Roman? Roman? So, um, M Y N A M E I S and then J U L I N A N. That's it. Thank right. you. And if you're an experienced user, you can do that much quicker. No? If both people know Lorman, then it's, I think, quick. No? Well, you know, the, the deafblind people who use it every day with their assistants or families, they are incredibly fast. And I'm very slow still because I only use it with my daughter and a few friends. And normally when there's good conditions, meaning not much background noise, um, then I can hear with my implant well enough. But um, if there are crowds or at the station, at the airport, I'm lost and I'm happy to use it. Uh, for me, it's ideal for short um, information, not necessarily um, to have conversations the whole day, then it gets quite exhausting. Um, yeah. And my understanding is it's quite easy to learn uh, since it's an alphabetic uh, tool. You, you mostly use letters, so it you don't have to learn the language. You just have to learn what, exactly. what letter is what. No? So in comparison to um, the sign language, the sign language takes probably a year, two years probably, to learn it reasonably well. Um, this method takes, we offer courses now, and, and the course is structured that you have one meeting with two hours and uh, then you are able to use the alphabet and spell out words. Um, and then if a group likes, then we offer a second meeting just to practice so you get a bit faster. Um, but of course, if you use it regularly, you will get fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then let's, you started this already, let's go and uh, look at your project, what you're up to. We also, you started a website which is called www.lorman.org uh, and it's a lot about training and teaching and creating awareness. Hmm? Um, I may say quickly, the website is, it exists, it's not, <laughs> not looking great, it's just about to be redone completely, um, but it, one can look up how it works, there are two films in it. The idea of our um, association is that we offer courses mostly um, to the deaf, blind or hearing impaired plus their group, say the family or maybe it's an office, a small office um, where a hearing impaired person can feel very isolated because there might be me meetings and everyone talks and this is the situation which is for hearing impaired particularly difficult when there's background noise or different voices at the same time. So very often they will be observing but not participating. Now if you use Lorman, um, you will um, just get a summary of what's going on and then the person can um, say, excuse me, I want to ask a question or something. Um, and so what we do, we invite the group, the whole group of the office, and we say we teach it everyone at the time so they can use it together and not the hearing impaired needs to pass it on. Mm -hmm. And the same with families, of course, it um, seems to be much easier to have the whole family and um, see how the different members um, take it uh, mm -hmm. and they can cope. You mentioned one interesting aspect. Um, it's um, known as to be a tool for the deaf blind, uh, but also from your situation, uh, you, you say and you, you experience it, it's also a tool for the hard of hearing. No? Uh, so uh, it's not only for this 
uh, are the small community, but for a much bigger community that if this is known, would help a lot more people. No? So we'll have to see um, whether people, for example, in Austria, where we are uh, willing to use it, the hard of hearing, whether they are willing to accept that um, we only founded this association in 2019. So it started with COVID and it was very difficult to approach uh, hard of hearing groups, people. Um, so we don't have enough experience yet to tell whether it will work in Austria that they will use Lerman or they prefer technical devices. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is a chance that it might spread. The other idea I had is that it might be interesting to um, use it in developing countries where a hearing aid is not necessarily easy to get. An implant might be a lot more difficult than in Austria. And um, for these people, it might be, it might, they might accept it much easier. They might be happy to have any tool um, that's practically for free. This cotton gloves, you can get it. And uh, there is also on the telephone, um, say in Austria, if you want to practice, there's an app. Um, it's called Lern Lormen. Um, and it has the alphabet and it also has exercises to spell out words and sentences. So you can practice anytime, which is also very convenient. But otherwise the glove, the cotton glove is enough. You just can spell out words over and over until you know it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's finish. We are already close finishing. Right. This is a call to action. Everyone who is interested in what you just presented, Juliana, get in touch with you. There's www.lorman.org. There's your contact data. Uh, so if you want to try this out, if you want to learn more, if you want to find out if this is interesting for you, get in touch. Juliana is happy to connect with you. If you like you. to do courses, please do get in touch as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So thanks, Juliana. Um, I think we did a good Thank job you, in, uh, in explaining what uh, Lorman is and also what you're up to and congratulations also personally from my side. I think it's really an important topic. And we're now handing over to Petra Blitzka, uh, who is as, uh, as always a genius in, in summarizing everything in graphic facilitation. So over to you, Petra. Thank you. Um, we heard a very exciting language. Uh, we heard about an exciting language because you would have to feel it to experience it. Um, it, is, uh, it was developed a long time ago by Hieronymus Lorm, who just prax practiced it with his family. Um, and only after he died, I heard, um, that, he, um, that it was possible to give, uh, give this language to other people. It's not a language, it's a technique. I'm sorry, it's a, it's a technique to spell out words, so it's not a language, it's a technique. Thank you for so correcting me. It's much easier. You don't need hours and years to learn it. You can learn it very fast. And it's about uh, putting the signs into the hand of the deaf and hard or hard of hearing person who is also, li also blind or visually impaired. So it's a technique where the hearing and seeing person can communicate um, very easily. It's very useful in noisy environment. It's um, very useful also for short conversations. So it is not a language, but it supports communication. Uh, no technical equipment is necessary. So it's cheap, it's accessible for everyone. But if you want, there is also an app. And if you want to learn more, go to www.lormen.org. Um, the website is still being improved, but everything you need will be right there. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Concise and precise and short uh, as always. And this concludes uh, this fireside talk. Thank you. <laughs>